walking through your process from going to Pakistan to Canada? Was it smooth sailing or assuming it was difficult in its own ways? So do you mind just going through that process? Yeah, so uh, after I uh, graduated, in fact, when I was doing my electrical engineering from NAST, I had pretty much made up my mind that, yes, I'm going to do a master's degree. The primary objective was not to settle abroad at that time, but it was mainly to get some international exposure because I thought that really adds value to your you know, professional and personal development. So that was the main goal. And secondly, because I wanted to switch away from electrical engineering. And having done a few courses on ML during my undergrad, I knew that this is this space of data science and machine learning is something I pursue later on. So while I was doing my bachelor's, I got an offer from Waterloo to do a master's in data analytics. And at the same time, I got an offer for a manufacturing position at Unilever Pakistan as well. It was a hard decision, but I de- at that time I decided to defer my admission by one year. And I gave my joining to Unilever. I was like, okay, let, let's give it a try. And it ended up being a costly decision. Why? Because at the time when I had to pay my tuition fee to Waterloo, the Pakistani currency had further devaluated by an additional 20%. So it was a bit costly decision, but the overall Unilever experience, I think it was worth it. Okay. And how did you manage to get the role? Because I know it's quite challenging in Pakistan and even in Canada, right? To get your first foot in the door. So how mm-hmm. was that? How did you find that experience? When after my, after I resigned from my job at Unilever, I started doing my master's and my master's was actually a co-op based master's program. At that point, I went to this standard university process. The University of Waterloo has an internal job por- uh, portal. Many employers would come in and post job postings and then you interview at different companies and then the the students rank different companies and the companies rank different students and then they have this simple matching algorithm and you're then matched to a position. So that was pretty much what my process was. I did get a few offers from different companies, but the one offer that I actually ended up accepting at RBC was actually through a referral. So there was this job posting I saw on LinkedIn and I saw that one of my seniors from NUST, who was also my senior at Waterloo, was working there. And I didn't know her, but I still put up my courage and just messaged her on LinkedIn that, hey, this is the job posting. Can you please refer me? And she was helpful enough and she forwarded my resume and I interviewed and I finally accepted the position. So that's how I basically got my first co-op position in Canada. Interestingly, the full-time offer I got later on after I graduated, although I got other offers through my online applications as well, the one I finally ended up accepting was through a referral again from a senior from NAST. So I really realized if I compared the, the ratio, the interview call to application ratio between just applying online blindly versus asking and reaching out to people and getting referrals, I think I I saw at least a 10x difference between the two. 